I've got one that can see. Uh, he's a tall Caucasian male. Doesn't appear armed. Wearing sunglasses. There's not been any coverage of the possibility of agent provocateurs. For Sid to, to suggest that uh, that uh, Someone any, any officer would, well, that any officer would take direction, let alone try and provoke uh, uh, violence uh, to justify the security costs is just outrageous. It's, uh, he should he should apologize, and I think as the uh, representative of the police association uh, said today, he should resign. Our convergence space is open, mm -hmm. but uh, you do sense that there are a few undercover people there. Oh. Um, you know, just because they just show up out of the blue and ask mm -hmm. very particular questions like who's the leader. Uh. Um, so <laughs> even though we don't operate that way, mm -hmm. yeah. um, so there is a heightened sense of concern about it but i think we're also trying to you know um stand on our principles which is you know we have our principles we have our vision um and and not be closed off you know like we don't want to exclude people mm -hmm. um so that's sort of like a balance act we're trying to do mm -hmm. um but definitely we are concerned with agent provocateurs are all the protests you're planning for next week going to be peaceful she said without question there's no doubt about it they're all peaceful so that's one aspect of it and then we've had this debate going on all week ever since on wednesday at our noon show here on cp24 sid ryan said that he is concerned about police infiltrating protest groups and being uh, agents provocateur in other words that they've been breaking the law as he said to justify the huge expense of security the over billion dollars being spent next week and then there is a debate back and forth between mike mccormick who is a police union president he is saying there's no question police would not break the law sid ryan said i'm not suggesting they would break the law but he said their political masters would want to cause some fuss to justify that expense and then finally we put to bed this afternoon at least for the afternoon, G, when the Minister of State for the Americas, Peter Kent, stopped by the studio, and he had heard and, and was watching the broadcast today, and he came in and he said definitively from the government that there is no way the government would ever ask any police force, any police person, any peace officer to break the law. Extremely disappointed today, even though we've worked extensively with the police in terms of uh, the march route that we're going to be taking, how far away from the fence we're going to be. Even today, just to hang our banner on that particular fence behind us, uh, we were told, no, that's not acceptable. Uh, that's coming from, you know, from the police today, even though we've been working with them as partners for the last two months. We've rerouted our, our march away from Trinity Bellwood. We've rerouted our march away from taking it across the, uh, the Lakeshore Boulevard. We've rerouted it away from Young Street. Um, no matter how much we bend over backwards, uh, we still run into stone walls as we did here today. So it, it doesn't bode well. I mean, this kind of approach where we work with them and we're trying to, uh, to put on here a family-friendly protest. We want families to come out. We want to bring their children out. We want them to bring their relatives out. Um, nobody should be afraid of marching with the labor movement. And yet, you know, we've got this armed fortress in our city, uh, the likes of which I've never seen. I've been in, in Mar del Plata in South America I've been in Seattle, I've been in Quebec City. I've not seen anything like I'm seeing here today in this past week in terms of police mobilization. No, I would defend to the death uh, Sid Ryan's right to free speech. But uh, with, those remarks, with those remarks, he's devalued the concept. Why? They're outrageous. Uh, they are provocative in themselves. Well, I mean... I, I agree with the uh, with the spokesman for the uh, for the Toronto Police, uh, Police Association, Association like today. Yeah, he was quite quite rightly uh, indignant and outraged, and I and I share that with him. Uh, the um, the men and women of our of our Toronto force, of the other forces of the GTA that will be providing security, the uh, the Mounted Police and others. Uh, are in the business of, uh, of serving and protecting. Surete de Quebec police officers uh, were caught as agent provocateurs. Um, they were dressed as aggressive uh, protesters uh, with rocks in their hands in an attempt to incite violence. Um, George, as a representative of the Toronto Police, can you assure us that the Toronto Police Force uh, will not engage in any um, police uh, agent, uh, provocateur agent activities at the G20 Summit? Um, other matters, security matters, I'm not at liberty to, those, to discuss those in an open format. They have used them in the past, even though they're illegal, and they won't um, uh, commit to not using them. 
integration almost uh, with the Security and Prosperity Partnership. And I know that there's a popular video posted on YouTube, and uh, you can, everyone can check it out, titled uh, SPP Protest Union Leader Stops Provocateurs. And it's featuring you, and, and it was uh, filmed during the demonstrations in Montebello last summer. And as I understand it, you filed an official complaint about the incident with the Police Ethics Commissioner? Yes, and your timing is uh, impeccable. I uh, was uh, interviewed by employees of the commissioner today from 8.30 a.m. till quarter to 12 noon on our complaint. Uh, and when they were finished with me, they interviewed uh, a number of my staff as well. So that uh, complaint is alive and well, and uh, we're hoping that uh, the truth will come out. Definitely. Uh, one of the things with, with the complaint is that it's quite shocking is that it almost implies that the police officers, uh, the provocateurs featured in this video clip, they may have been commanded by their superiors to disguise themselves as protesters, pick up rocks and aggressively confront other police officers and then get themselves arrested almost. Uh, do you agree that this seems like a very peculiar tactic to be using? Um, I, I, my personal belief is, our union's belief is, that uh, this was a political maneuver by someone in power quite far up the uh, food chain. I think that uh, it's quite possible that it came out of Stockwell Day's office or, in fact, the Prime Minister's office. This is a tactic that they've been caught at before. It's just not some far-fetched pipe dream. Uh, if you can recall in the APEC hearings, that uh, it became clear that the RCMP were sent in under direct orders of the PMO's office. In our case, the CEP's case, we were there, of course, to support the Council of Canadians, but we were there protesting the SPP and the issue that you raised earlier about uh, Canadian national energy security. One of the things that uh, politicians either don't know or refuse to engage in the debate with us when Peter Lohe and his crew said that uh, they were going to turn the oil off to eastern Canada, that was uh, BS then and it's BS now. Uh, there never was, never has been a pipeline that would carry oil from western Canada to the refineries in Ontario and Quebec. They all go through the United States. And this is why we were there in Montebello to protest uh, this government's, you know, lack of uh, will or their, you know, just absolute carte blanche giving away of, of our energy while letting the people in Ontario and Quebec, well, they're left there with, uh, with their knickers down in, in cold weather. As we confirmed yesterday, three people to question were in the Sulpitz Quebec police officers performing their duties. So what that does is that really shows the fascist extremes that the Canadian government is willing to go through uh, in order to discredit uh, people who are going to be here protesting. And, you know, important one to remember, can't keep a good samurai down.